There is just something magical about the garden when the sun comes out after a long, heavy rain. It's like everything is smiling and glowing with happiness. I'm pretty sure those tomato plants grew an extra foot. Just before the storm set in, the lattice that I had positioned here as a demo started to fall. They were breaking the bamboo stakes. So I'm definitely going to have to get some stronger reinforcements if I want to use the lattice or go with a different plan. But I've got to do something quick because these tomatoes are going to end up growing right out of the ground, laying down on their sides if I don't. One thing that's not fun about the rain is it definitely causes all the weeds to germinate and grow fast too. <laughs> we got a little bit of weeding to do in this bed. I try to keep the beds that I'm currently growing in very well maintained if I have the time and the energy. And these pepper plants are definitely looking good. And despite the flea beetle damage on the leaves, we have an eggplant growing. I can't wait to taste that. We've got some Husky Cherry Red. It's a hybrid I've really always liked. It's great for containers. I've seen a lot of people use it on pots on their patio and it works really well. I'm super excited about those. They're really yummy. They're a big cherry. The Rosella Hibiscus is doing amazing since I planted it in the ground. I thought it wasn't going to make it, but we've got three here that look like they should do really well. The huckleberry are definitely bouncing back. They look taller than the peppers now. This pepper plant looks like it's about to set on some flowers even. And look at this dill. My dill baby is not so much a baby anymore. It's growing up and growing big. These pepino melons, I can't wait to see what these are going to do. It's a really cool, unique fruit that we got from Baker Creek. Unfortunately, my only otricoli orange did not make it. That one, I had started more of them, but they didn't do well. And uh, that one was just barely alive when I planted it. But the rest of these peppers are looking great. Ooh, look at this pepper plant. It's got quite a few blooms starting on it. So this is, I see the purple stem, so I'm guessing this is one of my purple ones. And it's a Buena, Buena Mulata. Beautiful. So many peppers. Oh my goodness. I spy with my little eye. Is that the first ripe blueberry? Is it ripe? I don't want to pick it if it's not. I think I might wait till this afternoon and then pick it. Um, something got the ones that were over here. There were some right there on that little stem. So I might actually should pick it, huh? Yeah, why not? Worst case scenario, it'll be a little sour. Mmm, it's good. It's a little bit sour, but it's got such a strong blueberry flavor because they were developing during the time that we didn't have any rain. So that makes them a more intense flavor. So, mm, that's good. For those of you that follow on Instagram, this is the triple bloom that I posted a picture of. It is really, really big and it's caused by fasciation. That's when more than one bloom binds together and fuses itself. It also can be stems like that. But look at the flowers on their own. They're really big. I think these are going to be a big fruit. I've never grown them before. It's the Tennessee Spears Green. And I see a little caterpillar that I'm going to swoosh. I am starting to see some small army worm damage. No, um, you see how the holes are really small? Yep, there we go. There we go. So when I see this kind of damage, I come through and I start squishing it off, picking it off, look underneath the leaves, get them when they're small, and they haven't done a whole lot of damage, and it'll be all right. Another thing that I like to do when I see small damage like this beginning with small caterpillar damage on any 
fruit or vegetable that I'm trying to grow. I don't apply it to my herbs because most of the damage that you see on dill, parsley, and fennel is going to be from the black swallowtail caterpillar. So I don't apply it to that. But the product I use is called BT or Bacillus thuringiensis. And it is very effective against caterpillar and only caterpillar. So it doesn't harm any of the other beneficial insects. Um, and some of you might be getting grossed out by watching me smush these. And I used to be grossed out by it too when I was younger and my mom used to do it in the garden. I used to say, oh, how can you do that? When they're small like this, little caterpillars, it's much easier. Ooh, we got a lot of damage down here. All right, so we, we might need to pull out the big guns and apply some BT because this is at the label at the level that we would consider past the threshold of safety for the plant. So this plant will, will suffer if something isn't done at this point. And you can see it's already, they've damaged some of the stem there. That's where caterpillars have chewed on it. So I need to get my BT out. Another thing that you can use on caterpillars that's less safe for the environment as far as um, other insects go, it's not as bad for the environment as it is for multiple species of insects, is the spinosad or spinosad, um, depending on how you pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. Um, so anyway, spina, spinosad works really well against caterpillars and other insects that eat the leaves. So you just have to be real careful to not apply it near the flowers because you don't want it to get on any of your bees or other pollinators. Unfortunately, I am now 99.9% .9 sure that this is herbicide damage. Strange because it's been in the ground. The hay material that caused the herbicide damage has been in the ground for over a year. So I really did not expect to see any damage this year. But you can see some of them are really affected. And the only thing I can figure is there are certain pockets where there's more hay. So you see this section from right about here down to right about where that one's fallen out of the into the path has a lot of damage, a lot of herbicide damage, which means that this was probably where the concentration of my hay was put down. It's sad, really. Just goes to show you, you have to be really careful about what you are using in your garden. I have seen a lot of herbicide damage from manure, even composted manure. One brand in particular has stood out over the past few years as being a direct contributor to herbicide damage, and that is black cow, spelt with a K. I have been cautioning people to not use that compost anymore because I have seen a ton of people that have posted photos and said all I used in this bed was black cow and they are full of herbicide damage. We had a beautiful thriving um, pallet garden that we built for Ryan's mom and dad that was a raised pallet bed that they could grow things in the backyard and his dad would be able to work on in his wheelchair. And it was growing beautifully. Everything was gorgeous the whole first season and the whole first year. And then come the next spring, it had settled a bit. And so we said, oh, well, we've got to get some compost added in there. So why don't you stop by the store and get some black cow? Because that is what I always used to recommend to people. Um, I used it for years with no issues. And so they went and got the black cow and we put it in the beds. And that year, everything died, starting with the tomatoes. Tomatoes are the first one to show herbicide damage in the garden. They are very sensitive to herbicides. So they're a good indicator plant. It's a good idea to put a tomato plant in your garden, even if you're not wanting tomatoes, just so you can know if any of the mulch, straw, hay, manure, compost even can have herbicide damage. Most herbicide damage comes from drift where it's a windy day and somebody's spraying near you in a field and it blows in and sprays the plant. But more and more now we're seeing herbicide damage in our gardens because the farmers who are cutting the hay and straw and feeding that hay and straw to their animals are not caring about the herbicides anymore. They were, they're being lazy. They're using herbicides to make their job faster and easier 
and it's cutting corners that are causing serious issues. I don't even want to think about the fact that my animals are eating this hay. I, I really try to block that out of my head because we don't have a choice. We don't have an organic no spray farm around us that doesn't use herbicides. So if you do know of one and you are able to find one in your neck of the woods, it's a good idea to get the no spray hay, even if it costs extra. Ryan surprised me with a couple of throwaway blueberries. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, of course, they had a lot of damage to them, but that's not something they can't grow out of. This is a Pearl River Southern Highbush Blueberry, and this is Bonita Rabbit Eye. So those are good ones to have to cross-pollinate each other. I think it's so cute how these marigolds are outgrowing the tomatoes. <laughs> They sure like it here. This one's even blooming. So cute. I love watching these mud daubers gathering mud to make their nests with. They are very beneficial insects. They do not sting you. And they eat black widow spiders as their favorite snack. I'm trying to capture them, but they're moving so fast. They're really cool. Oh, that's funny. The one thing I wasn't sure was going to do anything before the heat came in was kohlrabi and it looks like it is getting a bulbous formation on the stem that is just what it's supposed to do some of this cabbage is getting to where it's starting to build a little bit of a head shape starting to form still really soft not tight like I need it to be I don't know that it will amount to anything but at the very least it can still be eaten we got a tremendous amount of rain over the weekend, which we really, really need. Our soil needed to be rehydrated and brought back to optimum performance level. So I'm super excited about that. The goats were not as excited because they spent a lot of time inside and they didn't like that. And at one point when we thought the weather had cleared and it was sunny and bright and shiny and we put them out and it rained. So they were all clustered underneath the shelter from the rain and I felt so bad because it was like just a passing shower. So it was no point in running out here and putting them up because it was gonna be over soon. But I think they'll get over it. A little bit of rain every once in a while won't hurt them too much. Although they act like it. What we weren't planning for is all of this. We had a very large pecan limb fall right here. Luckily, Ryan was able to borrow a chainsaw and get it cut up. But I can only imagine how scared the goats were when they were right on the other side of this wall when it happened. Those poor babies were probably jumping out of their skin. Makes me wish I had a barn camera. <laughs> Not because I think it's funny, but a barn camera would be really, really useful and helpful for us for kidding, you know, being able to watch and not have to be right there with the labor the whole time. We could just keep an eye on things and see when it started to progress further. But I'd also like to know how scared do they get when there's a bad storm, when it rains really hard or thunder claps really close by, you know, is that something that scares them? And maybe I could give them something like lavender oil or a rescue remedy prior to a storm's coming through. I could just put the lavender oil on their collars or what have you, and that would help calm them. So if they do get freaked out about it, I'd like to know. <laughs> um, I've seen when they've been out here when a storm comes in, they all kind of run for shelter, but they don't act like they're scared. They're just more hating rain. What are you doing, Autumn? What are you doing, girlfriend? My friend. Oh, scrunchy, you gotta be my friend too. Oh, yes. Oh, hello, thing one and thing two. Where's April and Mamie? Oh, my scrunchie. Oh, my scrunchie. He loves me. Autumn loves me, too. Oh, scrunchie is a climber. Scrunchie, scrunchie, climb, climb. Scrunchie, scrunchie, climb, climb. Hey, sweet boy. You still think I'm your mama, huh? What is it? April and Mamie? Oh, you're following mama? Is she not giving you your milk? She she gets that way in the mornings where she's just like, I'm gonna eat my hay. There they go. Now they're getting it. 
But she gets to the point where she's like, I'm eating her, leave her alone. There you go. Ha! <laughs> mm, silly babies. Don't drink that water, that's for the ducks. I suppose I should... If I put a clean one down where they could reach it, then the ducks would reach it. So that's a hard... Maybe Scrunchy will show them. You can do it this way, guys. Oh, that was a good drink, April May May. Scrunchy, you don't drink on, May on Daisy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where are you going? <laughs> you sweet boy. You need a good home. We gotta find you a good home. Sweet boy. Even Ryan's getting attached to him. Even though he says we're not keeping him. <laughs> are you gonna be walking on two legs, go? Hmm? Wanna stand up? these goats. Go play. Go play with the others. How am I going to get out of here? It's going to be like autumn all over again. He's going to be crying for me when I go to leave. What do you think, Daisy? Can you distract him? <laughs> oh my goodness, baby. I got to go. I just want to apologize for anybody that missed out on any videos this weekend. I just didn't have the energy to do the things inside the house that I was wanting to do and show you. So I'm just trying to get that energy back, get the strength back. Just kind of having a little bit of a lull in my health and trying to move through it the best that I can. <laughs> One of the things that I was going to do is boil all of these quail eggs and make some pickled quail eggs, which are delicious. So I'm going to get them boiled today at least and start peeling. It's going to kind of time consuming to peel such tiny eggs, but we'll get there and I'll have the boys help me and it'll be fun. And whichever ones we break too much, we get to eat. That's the nice part. So that is what I'm going to do now. Thanks everyone.